So today's topic, as uh, Rasmus has pointed out, is uh, how to build awareness and sales in China with uh, SEO. And the reason I chose this topic is because SEO, especially for more mature companies, is an underutilized tactic. Uh, it is something that, if done right, it provides a steady stream uh, of, uh, of new business, of, uh, of high ROI, and uh, it is a great way to not only show an ad to an audience, but uh, really engage with them and get their attention. And um, we'll talk uh, at length about that. Um, we'll also go into um, some of the, um, the technical details, of course. And um, um, let me see. Yeah. Um, so we'll start off by, uh, by just a background on what is a CEO in general. Uh, we'll talk about China in specific. Uh, some of the basics in uh, in China. We'll go over a uh, a case study, and uh, finally um, there are some additional information if we have time. Um, so first, let's start with uh, what is SEO. Um, in general, uh, SEO is divided up into two major areas: that is on-site SEO and off-site SEO. And then there's a third area which is important, uh, but it touches upon both on-site and off-site, which is content. So uh, on-site SEO, you might think about everything that is on your site. Um, so the design, the architecture, the technical infrastructure, but also to some extent, the, the content that is, uh, that is on that site. And for off-site, it's everything, as the word implies, that happens off of your site um, that, is, uh, that is relevant. Um, so the most important aspect of that would be links. And we'll talk more about that. Um, on the content side, um, as I said, this can be both uh, on your site and off your site, uh, but especially uh, in the future, uh, good content will be more and more important. Uh, Google is kind of leading the way, uh, whereas uh, Baidu and other Chinese search engines are, uh, uh, are, are less focused on that, but they will uh, if, uh, if history is any um, uh, indication. Um, again, we'll talk about that. Um, so on the on-site side of things, um, there are several components. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, technical uh, with regards to how you show uh, your site, the H1, uh, what, what content is on there, uh, how the images are used, how you're internally linking, uh, but also things like um, uh, the loading speed of your website, the URL structure, um, and so on and so on. And we'll talk Again, more in depth about that. Uh, on the offsite side of things, uh, as I said, the major um, uh, um, the major tactic here is link building. Uh, the amount of links that you get to your site and the quality of those links is what determines how important uh, search engines uh, view your site as. Um, I want to talk a bit about the Chinese search market and um, how uh, how it looks at the moment. Um, so, as you all know, uh, from 2014, uh, almost all of Google services stopped working in China and uh, Baidu became the leading search engine. If you look at the, uh, the market share uh, for all devices, it's 75% uh, Baidu, so they get 70% of all the searches. And then there are uh, a, a few others that get a smaller amount, such as Sogu. Um, if we look at mobile, that picture is even more dramatic, uh, with 93% going to, uh, to Baidu. Uh, and so as a sort of initial conclusion, you can say that Baidu is the, um, the search engine to look at when it comes to, um, to SEO in, uh, in China. Um, then just by way of a sort of a mega trend, uh, we can see that the amount of mobile search traffic has eclipsed the amount of desktop uh, search traffic. Um, while that is very important, I wouldn't recommend, of course, depending on your business and, uh, and, and all the rest of it, I wouldn't recommend putting all of your eggs in a mobile basket. Um, and that is because certain tasks are better uh, performed on, on desktop. Uh, 
um, I'll, um, I'll just refer to, to finance in this case. Uh, there are certain requirements, uh, legal and compliance wise, to application forms, for instance. And in that case, uh, it becomes very difficult to, to have a seamless process on mobile. And, and thus, we see a majority of people doing their, um, their applications on, on desktop. And there are similar cases, uh, also the reverse. Um, so again, it's very important that you think not just about what is the trend, but also what is the behavior of your uh, of your target audience. Um, then I want to talk a bit about the differences between China and the West. Um, so there is a whole ecosystem of um, of, uh, of platforms that compete with the Western equivalents. Uh, many of the Western uh, media and applications are blocked in China, and so it is. Uh, uh, necessary to use the local products instead of the Western ones there. Um, this will, uh, will be very basic for some of you and for others, uh, uh, some new information. So I thought to, to discuss it. Um, it's also the case that many of the uh, local search engines will have their own set of, um, of, of products. And so Instead of um, using um, Google Maps, there's Baidu Maps. Instead of using um, uh, Google Analytics, there's Baidu Analytics, and so on. And uh, and thus, um, uh, again, very important that you use the local equivalents. If we look a bit at the um, uh, search results pages of Baidu, um, there are uh, some differences. Um, and there are some uh, similarities. So for one, um, kind of just like Google, a lot of the time they will show you search results that are uh, promoting their own platform. So in this case, on top of the results on your screen, you can see um, the, um, the, you know, the Baidu uh, maps uh, uh, results for, for this query. And uh, you can see that uh, among all of the different boxes here, uh, the organic results are quite sparse. And that very much depends on the type of query. Um, but uh, um, it is important, again, that you look at your own business and you see what do the results look like. And um, in this case, it might be that uh, you'll have, I mean, in the case of the example, it might be that you'll have a lot of uh, work, a lot of SEO work in um, in optimizing for the maps uh, uh, um, display so that you get on the front, but also things like the uh, Chinese Quora uh, called I think Zihu, uh, new news publications and uh, and so on. Um, these are all part of the of the mix of uh, what you need to pay attention to when it comes to uh, to search. In the end, our objective is to get more uh, clicks from search engines to your business or to get more business from search engines. And so it's not just about the organic results. Um, there are a number of tools that you can use. I'll just go through them um, so that you have somewhere to start. Um, just like Google Search Console, which used to be called Webmaster Tools, there is an equivalent from, from Baidu uh, called Web, Baidu Webmaster Tools. And uh, there are a lot of very important uh, functions in there, um, such as data submissions, uh, the search display, um, monitoring of data, and uh, optimization um, of, of various items. Um, there is um, uh, a, a very good case of, uh, of ensuring that this is your first step in, uh, in setting up your, your website from a measurement and tools perspective. Uh, then there's the alternative to Google Analytics in China called Baidu Analytics. Um, again, it's, it's very similar. Um, and um, this is a free tool for tracking and reporting traffic data. Um, it is uh, kind of a hub for, um, for, for seeing what people are doing on their website. Um, it will also provide very valuable insight as to what to optimize on for, for SEO and so on. Uh, so you'll see which pages are doing well, what articles are people actually reading, you know, what is the time spent on a specific page. Uh, but you can also see what are the underperforming website uh, pages on your on your website. So, for instance, um, you can sort by the number of visits, uh, see uh, what is the bounce rate, so the number of people that come to your site and kind of straight away 
uh, want to leave. And uh, that is a good indication that something is not uh, right between the intent of the searcher or visitor and uh, the content on their website. Furthermore, uh, many of the uh, SEO tools that, uh, that, that we definitely use and uh, many uh, uh, in-house SEOs use do not work properly on the Chinese market. And um, the ones that do are almost always in Chinese. And so you're uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place. Um, there are a few useful uh, tools that you can use. Uh, one of them is Dragon Metrics. Uh, you can actually use that tool not just for uh, for rankings, but also to do research on keywords and all the rest of it. Um, you should keep in mind that the differences between the different regions in China are very large. And so all of this is sort of a consistent data set to uh, double check uh, or to see progress, but it shouldn't be used uh, literally. Um, I'll talk uh, about on-site uh, SEO. As I mentioned before, there's um, a large part of the SEO puzzle, uh, what happens on your site. And I'll just go through some, uh, some do's and don'ts and, uh, and various um, uh, input for you. Um, firstly, you'll probably all be familiar, but I'll, um, I'll talk a bit about this. Uh, there's the Great Firewall of China. Uh, there is a uh, technical firewall that sort of filters out uh, all of the traffic uh, of people um, inside of, uh, of China, and they'll scan for certain prohibited content. Uh, they will block certain services altogether. Um, so Google, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Wikipedia, the New York Times, they're all inaccessible everywhere in, uh, in mainland China. Uh, and not only uh, are those services um, uh, um, not available, you should also uh, take good care not to link to them anywhere on your Chinese website uh, and or to incorporate them on your pages because that might uh, also cause difficulty for uh, for you. Um, there are certain websites that can be inaccessible or load slowly in some regions of China. Uh, while at the same time prefer, uh, you know, uh, functioning perfectly well in other regions. And so again, it's very important that you take a region by region approach uh, to, to these things and seeing what, uh, what, what works and what doesn't. Uh, again, as you will probably be familiar, anything politically sensitive, um, uh, anything to do with gambling or pornography, things like this are, are blocked. And so you should really uh, stay very far away from those things um, in your in your website. Perhaps obvious. Um, besides the the firewall, uh, hosting and loading speed is a major issue. Um, so anyone wanting to do business in China uh, that has a website that is hosted abroad will have a difficult time. And the majority of China, uh, it will give you very very long loading times. That is uh, because of the infrastructure, but also because of the, um, the, the, the firewall. Um, and so it would be a, a good idea to have a physical server in China. Uh, besides this, uh, the domain, um, it would be best to have a .cn domain, um, but you can have a, a, a .com and a language indicator uh, as well. Again, um, the domain and the place that it is hosted are two separate things, if you're not familiar. Um, the, the domain uh, or the, the TLD, the, um, the, the, you know, the .com, .cn, and so on, is basically just a, um, a sort of a phone book for web browsers to know what IP address to load content from, so, so what server to, to, to use, um, and so, while .cn is favored, it's not a must, uh, but the server uh, should ideally be in uh, China, uh, or you can work with, uh, with something like a local CDN uh, to, to speed things up. Uh, definitely a very important item to, to discuss with, uh, with your IT. Um, it is also a um, ranking factor. So, the speed of your site determines also to some extent how high you will be in the search results. Um, 
So again, very, very, very important item, not only for search, but also for uh, the end user. We see a direct correlation between the loading time and the conversion rate. So that means like uh, the amount of people that are actually doing what you want them to do on your website, such as purchasing or signing up. Uh, and so for, for every like, like second, you'll see a, a, a drop off in, um, in, uh, in, in conversion rate. Um, then there's another very important item in China, which is the uh, ICP license. Um, you'll need that to, um, to, um, to, to really uh, have a successful website uh, locally. Um, there are two types of licenses, the, the personal website and the, uh, the business website. And um, the, uh, the business license together with the locally hosted uh, website are kind of a, um, a, a must. Although we see some movement towards uh, letting that go, for instance, Baidu no longer really requires uh, an ICP license to start advertising there, and so that's um, that's a, uh, a signal it's not as important as it once was. Uh, then there's a very important element of meta tags. So these are meta tags, is, as the word implies, meta. Uh, it tells search engines and users to some extent what a page is about. Um, there are some differences between the West and, uh, and China. The main reason is that if you use Chinese characters, um, they'll, um, they'll, they'll represent about one and a half to two uh, Latin characters each. And so you should have um, uh, less long uh, in terms of characters, uh, titles and meta descriptions and so on. Um, a very, uh, no, well, not a very, but a, a difference between Google and Baidu is that uh, Baidu and, and the other Chinese search engines mostly still recognize meta keywords, which are keywords that describe the content, and uh, you should make sure that your website has those, uh, those filled out. Uh, another uh, difference is um, uh, that Baidu cannot process images as well as Google does. Um, and um, that uh, uh, the URL uh, language, uh, we'll go over it a little bit later. Um, uh, it's not um, very um, uh, intuitive, but probably you shouldn't be using Chinese in the uh, in the URL. Uh, you should be using uh, English or um, not as ideally Pinyin. Again, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, JavaScript, uh, less likely to work well in, uh, in China. Uh, again, Baidu cannot crawl that very well uh, as, as Google does. And um, any plugins, and again, this has to do with the, with the firewall. Um, a lot of the time, and this is a technical point for your IT to work on, but a lot of the time, websites load libraries from external places, so little files. And uh, for instance, they could be Google plugins or, or other, uh, and uh, they are blocked, and that will make your website break. And so uh, it's pretty important that, um, uh, that, that you check all of that um, thoroughly. Um, Simplified Chinese is the official language uh, to be used by, uh, by Baidu. Um, you can use traditional Chinese, but um, this is not uh, used in many different places, and uh, also it is not uh, preferred by, uh, by Baidu. As I mentioned before, the, uh, the, the length uh, differences are there, and so here, again, for your reference, uh, one Chinese character represents about one and a half, two Latin characters, and that has an influence on, uh, on, on everything else. Uh, for instance, the, the meta tags and, uh, and so on. Uh, as I refer to uh, for the URLs, um, Baidu is pretty good at um, combining uh, uh, Pinyin and uh, Simplified Chinese. So for instance, if you search in Pinyin, you'll still get the Simplified Chinese results as you can see in the image. Um, but um, it is uh, absolutely fine for international businesses to, such as most likely yourselves, to, to use uh, English URLs as well. Um, content for SEO. Um, 
I'll talk mostly about uh, content on your site here. Uh, and this becomes a more and more important subject for search engine optimization. Um, as search engines have evolved, especially in the West, they, um, they require um, uh, or they, they prefer to show uh, websites that have a lot of content on their website that are authoritative about a certain subject because they feel that is what their users want, uh, but also because it's probably more easy and better for them to deal with. They want to kind of separate the commercial side of their business and their information side of their business. So it is in their kind of benefit to show uh, information uh, in their organic uh, search results Whereas anything more commercial, you get businesses to pay for it. And so they favor the informational content. Um, so SEO content is online content, for instance, on your site, and it is designed for uh, ranking in search engines. And most of the time, uh, you will try to optimize for specific keywords. Um, so in the... Um, in the in the case, in the example of gyms, um, it'll be... Uh, uh, a local gym uh, and you want to rank for um, uh, weightlifting gym uh, Beijing for instance and uh, you will try to write content with those keywords in mind uh, write a lot of uh, uh, text uh, to describe and to be useful to to your end users and hopefully uh, together with the help of uh, some links or, or or you know authority over time uh, it'll show up higher users come to your site uh, when they search for it and they are convinced to to make a purchase or to sign up uh, in this uh, example so how to write SEO content. Um, it is very important that you define your goals uh, before you start writing. What do you want to do? Um, and speaking towards that is uh, the target audience and their intent um, should define the way that you're communicating in your, in your articles. Um, the intent can be defined in many different sort of classification systems, but one of the ones that uh, we like to use is uh, informational intent, educational intent, and commercial intent. Um, so if someone searches for sign up for Beijing uh, gym, uh, that is a commercial intent. Uh, if, they, uh, if they search for how to perform a deadlift, uh, that is an educational content. If they sign up for, or if they look for, um, uh, um, you know, the name of your gym plus uh, address and contact information, that is an informational query. And so you'll have to divide up this, this intent, who's your target audience, and start writing from there. Um, but not only that, uh, you'll also need to do some research. Um, so as I mentioned before, Dragon Metrics is a good way to, to do this. Uh, one of the places that we typically start with, um, with creating new content is to take a good look at the search queries, like the search words, uh, what the volume for those searches are, so how many people are searching for it, uh, what the competition is like, uh, so how difficult it is to, to rank for those, and uh, what the intent of that, um, of that traffic would be. Uh, then uh, we'll look at the uh, the competition for that, and um, we'll uh, we'll perhaps have some uh, additional uh, inspiration from community platforms, and uh, all together we'll make a universe of content. Uh, we'll then look at um, you know what is the priority, and we'll start plan. Uh, we'll make a content calendar, and we'll start planning in that content for each, uh, in order to to show up uh, organically. Um, you should try to use your keyword in the content. Um, that being said, um, whatever you read about like uh, the number of keywords or, or how to present it for a search engine, it is most important that people that come to your website uh, through, for instance, organic means are not uh, turned off by your content. So you should always write with the user um, in, uh, in mind. Um, but uh, uh, you know, for to make it optimal for SEO, uh, you can make sure that the keyword is in your URL, it's in your title tag, which is sort of the um, you know the, that should be the headline, the the title of the article. Um, there is uh, interlinking uh, to other articles that might be useful. 
um, and uh, try to keep the content between 200 and 1,000 Chinese characters. Um, again, very careful with the type of content that you're writing. Avoid sensitive subjects. Um, avoid politics, uh, pornography, gambling, and so on and so on. Uh, there are also uh, certain words that are on a on a blacklist. Uh, anything that is uh, even remotely related to that uh, will get you uh, sort of banned. And uh, and uh, again, it's very important to check any content for anything like that. Uh, there's also the Chinese advertising law, uh, where there's more restricted or sensitive words uh, related to uh, to claims of being the best or or, or the number one and so on. And so, um, um, again, there's an extra layer of care that you need to take when writing content for uh, for the Chinese market. Um, I'll talk a bit about offsite uh, SEO. Um, so. The main part of it is uh, link building. Uh, so link building is the increasing of quantity and quality of external links pointing to your site. This was, it's disputed, but the story is this was invented by um, uh, Google back in the day. And they thought um, scientific research uh, and researchers are judged by the number of citations that they're getting and the quality of their citations. So if a specific journal, let's say Nature or other uh, leading journal, would uh, cite uh, your study, that probably means your study is of high quality. And then the more uh, of such publications cite your study, again, the more, um, uh, you know, um, high authority it is. Uh, so they thought, why not use the same system for websites? Uh, because after all, the popularity and the quality of that popularity should uh, uh, produce more useful results in the search engines. And uh, Baidu has uh, taken that concept and refined it over time. Uh, and uh, it is still a, um, a, a huge uh, uh, factor in, the, in how you rank. I would say it's probably the most important one if the sort of basics are, uh, are taken care of. Um, one more important difference between uh, Baidu and Google is that uh, Baidu is less focused or less capable of focusing on quality of links. So certain spam tactics still work. Um, certain lower quality things still work. I wouldn't recommend you do it, uh, but uh, there's again less of a, uh, of a of a focus on quality, and so uh, I would say there's less risk to being more aggressive uh, in China. There are a number of, uh, of backlinks that you can use. Um, and again, it's one of the most important skills for SEO practitioners to, to master um, is a signal. And um, uh, it is very difficult to get uh, this to scale. And so, uh, especially in China, because uh, many websites do not allow uh, links and articles, uh, things have been kind of ruined by, uh, by spammers. Uh, there are still some common link building tactics, uh, for instance, using blogging platforms, um, doing content submission. In fact, that I would say is the main one, uh, using uh, question and answer platforms or doing reciprocal linking. And I'll go through them uh, one by one. So many link builders will create blogs on blog blogging platforms like Siena, uh, Tenya, Sohu, or 163. And they do that with the sole purpose of purchasing uh, publishing large amounts of content uh, with links back to their site. Um, they are very popular platforms, and so um, uh, it still works. But we saw a similar thing in the West with Blogger, with WordPress, and so on. And um, uh, Google has, over time, tweaked its algorithm to, to uh, to to have these be less important, and so it's likely that a similar thing will happen. For now, uh, they're still very important and uh, and um, and popular. One of the downsides is that um, because they're indexed so quickly, because they're so popular, uh, your content can 
quickly outrank the content on your own website, which is something you don't really want. Um, if you're optimizing for a specific keyword uh, by, by posting blogs, you, in the end, would like your own website to rank for it, not uh, a blog which uh, has as a purpose to, to boost the authority of your, of your website. Um, and so this is not a, the most uh, recommended uh, tactic. Uh, then there is the uh, content submission and the guest post. Uh, so many websites will accept content submission. Um, in some cases, that is with payment. Um, so you should be prepared for that. Um, and uh, many will also still uh, accept content that has a plain text link that doesn't have an anchor tag. And uh, another difference between Google and, uh, and Baidu is that Baidu will still consider them as backlinks. And uh, I think that this is one of the more natural ways of building your um, your 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 um, your your link profile. Um, then there's question and answer websites. Um, you'll kind of play uh, play a theater where you ask the question and then you answer it as well. You'll add in a link. Um, this is um, kind of a spammy uh, thing. Uh, the idea for content submission is that you make in-depth, good quality content that is uh, useful for the audience of the website that you're posting it on. And so even if it is with the purpose of getting um, uh, links to your website, it is still something that is of use and not very likely, given also the trajectory in the West, to be discounted, whereas uh, question and answer websites is um, uh, less good. Uh, then there's reciprocal linking. Again, this is something that doesn't really work in the in the West, uh, but it is possible um, on one-on-one um, -on -one basis or by using certain platforms that sell uh, these kind of links to um, to get uh, friendship links, which are um, uh, links usually at the bottom of the uh, of, of popular websites. Um, it, this is a question how long this will continue to work for, but it is something that you could use to uh, to to boost your your profile in the in the short term. So, um, how do you find these? What what do you do? You can check your competitors' backlinks. So, other people that are ranking for the terms that you want to rank for, you can use tools to extract uh, the links that are linking to them. And uh, you can see which one of those are, are relevant and approach them as well. This is a good way to catch up. After all, you already know that they're open to, um, to linking to, uh, to companies in your niche. Uh, you can check websites that have good rankings on broader industry-related keywords. Um, so for instance, if you're in the, um, in the uh, gym niche, you could also check for health-related websites and so on. Uh, and approach those, uh, write good content, and uh, and get links. And you can be more uh, creative in thinking about other categories or story angles that would fit your niche. Um, it is not 100% necessary to only get links from, uh, from websites that are solely about uh, your niche. Uh, it is good to, to have a majority. Uh, but uh, a natural link profile also have broader or unrelated websites, and so there should be a mixture. Um, then you can reach out. Uh, many times there are contact us pages or even looking at the who is record of the domain. Um, you can reach out to them, uh, ask uh, what the requirements are for submitting content and uh, submit them to, uh, to them. Um, again, just to point out that uh, webmasters know that there is value in getting content placed and, uh, and getting links to your website, and so a lot of the times they will ask for payment. Um, that is okay to do. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much unless the article says this article was paid for by this and this company, uh, in which case there might be a time at which those links will be discounted. Um, 
Uh, and just to head off uh, any such questions, uh, it is not very likely unless you very much abuse the search engines and really spam them that your website will get delisted or, uh, or, or get in trouble. Um, sort of the, not the worst, but the most common thing that would happen in the rare cases that you get into trouble is that uh, you'll, you'll get a warning and those links will be discounted. Um, so usually there'll be some back and forth uh, between uh, you and the website about the content, uh, edit it in certain ways uh, and, um, and, 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 and see what you know, images, what text and so on can be used. And um, yeah, then the link is usually placed. Uh, it'll be a good idea to revisit every once in a while if those uh, links are still up, especially if you've paid for them, um, they can disappear at times. So uh, just a quick uh, note there. Um, again, although some low quality spamming techniques are still effective, uh, the best long-term strategy uh, would be to use um, uh, high quality content posted on other websites and on your website, uh, focusing on websites that are of higher quality. So by looking at their SEO KPIs um, and then on your website, update content regularly, uh, write original, this is very important, high quality content, Focus on your audience, uh, but uh, also, it's, uh, yeah, uh, a bit conflicting, but quantity is also very important uh, if you want to keep up with, uh, with your competitors. Um, I don't know how I am for time, but I'll just um, uh, continue on uh, with, uh, with the summary. Um, this was already a very dense and, uh, and pretty long uh, um, uh, presentation. And um, there's a hundred times more to be said about, uh, about SEO and specifically uh, SEO in China. But I would say, if you ask me, what are some of the main things that I can work on right now uh, that, are, that are relatively easy? I would consider doing the following. Have your measurement tools set up. Uh, so that's analytics, webmaster tools, and so on. Uh, ensure all of your meta titles and descriptions are SEO friendly. Uh, ensure you have a good place on your site to post long form SEO friendly content, and then build links to your site through content submission, either paid or unpaid. And if you do those four things, um, you'll head off any issues and you'll get results pretty quickly. Um, it's not like advertising, but you can, um, you can um, get ranking for not very competitive terms uh, very quickly and for competitive terms with a sustained effort over time. Um, so I'll just uh, go over a couple of case studies here. Um, so the first is a luxury brand operating in China. It was not visible um, at all, not even for brand keywords. And so, um, we focused on building uh, high quality backlinks, uh, in this case around 30 per month, uh, specifically in China. Uh, we did upside, uh, on-site optimizations and technical uh, changes uh, to ensure that the, the basics are sort of there. And even this relatively um, uh, simple SEO program increased over time the, uh, or num the number of traffic by almost 500%. Um, not only that, uh, there's also a uh, large increase in visibility and the number of keywords that they're ranking for and so on. And uh, as a result, there was a significant growth in, uh, in, in brand recognition. Um, I'm not saying everyone will get a 500% traffic increase in such periods. But um, it, uh, if you have a sustained effort over time and you spend some money on this program, you will get, uh, and you do it right, of course, you will get a very good uh, ROI, uh, probably better than, than paid advertising, especially in the Chinese market where uh, advertising uh, quality is uh, iffy at best online. Um, then there's a uh, industrial manufacturing company. Um, KPIs for this was also to increase brand awareness, uh, organic traffic, um, and 
to sort of get more engagement from the audience. Uh, in the case of B2B, there is a much longer uh, sales process. And so what you try to do along the way of that sales process is create um, touch points. Uh, SEO is one part of that. Uh, you can do it with marketing automation as well as uh, through uh, content pieces, uh, through paid advertising. Uh, in this case for SEO, you try to build a journey, uh, try to get ranking, not for only commercial intent keywords, but also for things that uh, people that are just getting aware of their need or not even aware that are just in an industry that you like will search for, uh, will, um, will, you know, will stumble across uh, your website and, um, and, and thus are aware of you. And later, if uh, it becomes relevant, they will, might uh, become your customer. Uh, we did uh, also uh, build a, a lot of high quality links and uh, build uh, just 30 high quality uh, uh, SEO related blogs. And then you should think about uh, very long form, very in-depth, uh, very high quality um, uh, articles. And again, over time, we saw a large increase. The base was already quite good here. Um, but even in, uh, in sort of slow times, we saw a huge increase of 16%, uh, sometimes more. Um, and so that's the, I wouldn't say 500 is the, uh, is the 500% uh, is the, uh, the to be expected. So if you're starting from zero, then it will definitely be, um, be in that type of range, of course. But if you have an established website, then 20, 30% year over year is very achievable. And uh, if you think about what that would mean in terms of ROI, in terms of new business, um, that could make a substantial impact on their bottom line. Um, I'll just very quickly talk to you about Media Group. Um, feel free to, to uh, turn off your, your speakers, but um, we're um, a full service marketing agency, uh, originally from Denmark, and that's the, um, the connection here between, uh, between this group. Uh, we do have offices in Poland, UK, Switzerland, Australia. Uh, importantly, Hong Kong, uh, where I just came from, uh, where we deal with a lot of our mostly Danish and European clients, um, Asia business, uh, both on the B2C and B2B side. And um, it's not just like strategy or not just execution. We uh, try to help our clients uh, across the entire uh, uh, sort of spectrum of marketing services, both uh, um, in operations and strategy, uh, also on the tech side. And um, yeah, just to say that we're very experienced in running global campaigns in uh, all of those different uh, 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 advertising channels. Um, how are we for time, Rasmus? Well, we uh, still have uh, 15 minutes left and I can see that uh, we already have a few questions. So uh, yeah. All right, um, so we'll send out the presentation after um, the, um, the, the, the webinar. Um, just uh, for your information, there's some um, guide on how to get the uh, ICP license. Um, so um, th th that might help some of you. Um, this is where I can be contacted uh, or uh, through Rasmus as well. Thank you very much for, for a very elaborate presentation. And uh, yes, exactly. Uh, we will share these uh, slides with you following the webinar. But uh, first, we have time for a few questions. And um, well, maybe I can start by, by asking you, uh, when doing search engine optimization in China, um, how long does it take uh, to begin getting the results? Yes, I should unmute myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a lot depends on uh, how competitive is your niche? A lot depends on what is the goal that you're setting. A lot depends on how much budget you set aside, for instance, for, for building specific links. And so uh, we try to work on this, uh, and, and as you might imagine, we get this question a lot. Uh, we try to work on this from the other way around, like what is your goal? How long do you want it to take? Uh, and then we'll uh, suggest budgets and so on to achieve it. In the end, uh, every position, every um, uh, uh, ranking can be achieved. It's just a matter of, of, of sufficient budget and, uh, and sufficient time. 
I would say uh, it's not instant like paid media, um, but uh, if you give a program three to six months, you'll see uh, initial results uh, come through. Perfect, thank you. Um, we have a question here. Uh, does WeChat linking and activity have an effect on uh, your uh, search engine optimization performance? And how can your uh, SEO activities drive traffic to your company WeChat side. Mm. Um, <clears throat> um, so I think that uh, WeChat uh, itself is um, is not indexed by Baidu, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and so because of that, uh, anything that you link from there is not actually benefiting your um, your website. And so. Uh, in order to drive traffic to your WeChat, you will still need to have a uh, intermediary page uh, in which you promote promote that. So it will still be something on your site to to promote that uh, that, that that channel. Okay. Um, another question here: creating a new B two B website specifically for the Chinese market with local hosting and faster load time. Do you have any recommendations in terms of choosing a CMS that works for both Chinese colleagues and non-Chinese speakers? Uh, that is a very good question. Unless uh, my colleagues have uh, any specific input right now, I will be able to get back to you after uh, the webinar. Um, Mina, do you happen to know? Ah, we don't hear you. Okay, uh, so we'll happily get back to you. Uh, I think it's Michael uh, after a call to uh, to discuss this more and give you some input. Um, if you uh, if you drop uh, Rasmus a note, perfect. Um, yes. Okay. You mentioned the importance of content, the technical side of things, and links. How important are these? E uh, each of those um, for Baidu. All right, okay, so the three areas uh, that I mentioned were important were content, uh, what happens on the site, like technically, and what happens off the site. And the question is, how important are each of those elements? Um, look, in the end, the technical side of things is more of a uh, base. So if that's not there, then all the rest is, is kind of not that useful, but it's not um, a scalable factor. So it's not like you get your, uh, technical side, super extra good, and then you'll get more ranking. So I would say that is less important uh, as long as you have the base in order. Um, then content, um, well, that is, I think, the, the second most important part of it, and then links are the most important. The reason is that you can have the best content in the world. If no one knows about it, um, you're not going to, to get any visitors to your site. And so the links tell the search engines how uh, that your site is important and that you just need to, um, uh, that they need to look on your site for relevant content. If that content is there, uh, then, uh, then it will start to rank, uh, but uh, not so much the, the other way around. Okay. Um, well, finally, one more uh, question here. Um, I know SEO, uh, SEO uh, with uh, Google pretty well. What uh, what would you say are the main differences with Baidu? Uh, I would say uh, there are a couple of smaller ones that I mentioned, uh, but in general, I would say um, there's a lot more spam uh, in China that still works. And... Um, it is very possible to have huge swings in rankings and so on um, uh, because of someone doing more dodgy things. Uh, it's all a bit more wild west out there. Uh, and so um, while I wouldn't recommend uh, you follow them, um, in some ways, quantity is more important than, than quality. And so, um, so yeah, I, I would say that's the, the major uh, difference. Yeah, perfect. Well, um, maybe there are some last minute questions. Uh, if so, you are very welcome to uh, submit them in the chat. But um, otherwise I can uh, I can begin by saying thank you very much, Bob, uh, for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. 
Um, and we are very glad that you wanted to, to share this with us today. Um, and as uh, we mentioned before, we will send out the slides um, later today or maybe tomorrow. Um, and also, I uh, just want to briefly mention that BART and uh, Media Group Worldwide has offered a free mini audit for, um, for all participants as, at this webinar. And if you are interested in this mini audit, uh, please send me an email. Uh, I will uh, uh, type in my email here in the, in the chat. Um, send me an email and, uh, and reach out, and then uh, we will find out the uh, practicalities. But, but maybe, maybe would you just uh, mention a few words about uh, this uh, mini audit? Yeah, sure. Okay, so one of the ways in um, uh, which you can get good input on where to start is by having someone take a look at your website and uh, really go through everything with a fine uh, comb. Uh, uh, but um, that costs money, time, and uh, can sometimes be a distraction. Um, so we suggest we'll do a little audit where we point out some major issues some possibilities and so on. So you have something um, to grab and somewhere to start. And if you're interested, we can, of course, work together or do more something in depth. But at least we felt that, uh, you know, something more practical after this, uh, after this uh, webinar would be, uh, would be useful for some of you. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, it doesn't seem like we have uh, any more questions today. Um, but once again, uh, thank you very much. Um, and uh, thank you to all who participated today. Uh, see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys.